the 2023 CAF Women's Champions League is upon us in Cote d'Ivoire. Of course, uh, this weekend, what we'll ushers us into uh, this year's edition with the likes of uh, JKT Queens, Mamelodi Sundance, Ampapem Dakwa, you know, as far of Morocco, amongst others, all have gathered in Cote d'Ivoire preparing for the big one. Of course, uh, that would go down this particular year. Now, it's exciting to know uh, that, of course, uh, the teams are, uh, you know, really both, uh, you know, making themselves so high in confidence, doing a lot at the moment to ensure that, of course, uh, they go all the way uh, towards getting something. And to talk about uh, the competition is about to start this weekend is a women football expert. Samuel Amadu joins us all the way from Abuja. Good morning to you. Welcome. Yeah, good morning, Favor. Good to be part of the show this morning. All right. How is uh, Abuja this morning? Hope it's calm. Yeah, very well. Uh, great, great atmosphere and at least looking like uh, a sporting weekend already. All right. Uh, talking about the sporting weekend, uh, the CAF Women's Champions League is upon us. And um, with what we've been hearing and what we've been seeing, it seems the teams are really taking this more and more, more serious as it comes, as the year comes mm -hmm. by. Uh, when the teams already settled in in Cote d'Ivoire. I mean, Sam, you've uh, followed this series of teams and you've seen how they qualify. What do you think we should be expecting in this year's tournament? Oh, well, what we've seen so far, especially from the qualifying series, I think uh, it's been uh, an incredible one. Uh, uh, starting from uh, uh, the, the Wafu A, where we have AS Mande qualifying and uh, coming to the uh, Wafu Zone B, you know, where Apem Dakwa of Ghana did qualify, uh, AS Mandi of Mali did snatch that ticket from the Wafu Zone A. And, you know, it was quite uh, a very tightly contested one. Uh, and uh, the same could be said also of the, of the Wafu Zone B, you know, narrow, narrow triumph uh, over Nigeria side uh, by uh, Delta Queens by Ampem Dakwa of Ghana. And uh, uh, almost same time was also the, the qualification quali 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 uh, um, I ran it up too in the UNAF region where Sporting Casablanca of Morocco, you know, uh, nicked down one, you know, beating the, the likes of uh, Algerians and also Egyptian side to that ticket and ensuring that it will be for the first time uh, uh, one nation producing two teams, uh, two clubs, so that is uh, Morocco, you know, uh, in the finals. And this uh, is, an, is an incredible feat for. Uh, Morocco, Sporting, Casablanca, and also as far the defending champions in the finals for this one. And that definitely speaks only about the rising standard of football in Morocco, you know, and, uh, and not ignoring the fact that we also have a very uh, incredible finish, uh, a photo finish, if you ask me, in East Africa, where JKT defeated C JKT of Tanzania, uh, defeated uh, uh, CBE, uh, Commercial Banks of Ethiopia. Uh, in the finals on penalty shooters, and that was a very tightly and keenly contested finals uh, from the East African region. And to ensure that Tanzania remains uh, the giants of the East African region, you know, I remember last time Simba Queens, who finished fourth at the last edition in, in Morocco, uh, also couldn't make it to the finals, losing their championship sports to uh, to, to JKT, a military side in in. in uh, Tanzania. So this definitely uh, shows that, yes, it's a, also a very strong side uh, we are seeing from Tanzania. I know having JKT qualified, definitely you know that they are another strong side that will be keen to really go all the way uh, in the final. So I think we have quite a number of quality teams to watch out for, not ignoring uh, for inaugural champions, Namelo Sundance, who are now on top of the league in South Africa after uh, crawling back from 12 points gap, you know, uh, to, to, to edge uh, UWC of South Africa to the top and probably I think the lead by just uh, a point or goal difference at the top of the league and in South Africa. So I think it's definitely going to go down to the wire with no South Africa, the, the Madison and Sundown team. They are also in the finals of the of the men's African Football League uh, uh, inaugural championship. And I think definitely they will be keen to ensure that they do a double uh, on the continent this time around. So I think they, they look a very quality side. They obviously will have learned from their misfortunes uh, in the 2022 uh, championship and definitely will begin uh, to upstage as far, especially knowing that they are all playing on intra grants this time around and definitely a home advantage will not be a, a chance for either side. So I think it's definitely will be a curious opportunity for these two teams as far of Morocco 
our defending champions, and Marmel Sundowns to also go all the way to challenge for uh, their second title, uh, second title in three uh, final ap uh, appearance. So I think it's it's incredible, and it's it's definitely going to be one everybody has to watch out for. A lot of good things. All right. Or, uh, not not the, the, the Central Africa, uh, where you have a hurricane, a hurricane from from Equatorial Guinea. Uh, they did qualify and you know displacing Malabo Kings, you know, the famous Malabo Kings, we, we, which had a lot of quality players in the Nogra edition in Egypt. And now we are seeing Hurricane replacing them. And at least this speaks only about uh, the growing dominance of Equatorial Guinea at club level on the, on the Central African region. And unfortunately, we are not seeing the likes of Cameroon. A lot of top countries at the national level are not managing to, to measure up at the club level. This speaks only about the great potential in some of this uh, footballing country and also what they are doing differently to ensure that, yes, uh, they have quality uh, league footballing structure and ensuring that they attract the best of talent to their various countries. So I think it's definitely going to be fireworks no doubt from tomorrow, and I will wait. we can't wait to see at uh, the opening match uh, of the competition. All right, uh, you've uh, really talked about uh, you know uh, each and every team and their chances and how they were able to get through to this stage. I mean, Jerry Shabalala, the coach of Sundowns, and uh, Zenile, the captain of Sundowns, they are really talking tough uh, ahead of uh, their opener. Let's quickly hear from them. We'll be right back. All right, apologies, I couldn't get you that particular one, but maybe, of course, before the end of the show, we'll hear from them. But we still have uh, Sam Amadou uh, still with us, uh, talking about uh, the CAF Women's uh, Champions League uh, tournament. Now, Sam, I'd like to ask you, we've seen different editions, we've seen Mabeluri Sundance win, we've seen Asfa win, and now we're going to have a new particular tournament. How, do you, how much of uh, impact or improvement has the CAF Champions League, Women's Champions League, brought to women's football in Africa? Oh, well, realistically, it's been a game changer. It's been some sort of uh, uh, a, a, an explosion that has also come around the women's game in Africa. I was seeing the margins of a lot of top quality players uh, really gaining uh, much prominence, especially when you look at uh, uh, the, the Players of the Year awards. You now see quite a number of quality players, uh, you know, from the Champions League now managing to have uh, a space on that on that on that. Uh, and that's rankings, you know, at least having to challenge uh, for the player of the of the year, you know, and this this definitely it's some sort of uh, es explosive platform uh, for a lot of top talented players on the domestic scene to be seen and also uh, to to be appreciated, especially knowing how best uh, they've they've they, they've shown and not even being seen on their local scene and definitely can compete strongly against. Are the best of the best players around the world from Africa. So I think it's it's a major breakthrough for women's football and one uh, we cannot even uh, quantify how much of a magnanimous impact it has been on the continent for women's football and at least opening the proof and improve sponsorship. You know, see new owners emerging, you see new investors, you see private sector embracing the women's game. And, you know, it's, and at this point, interestingly, the, the tournament hasn't gained its sponsors yet, but uh, seeing the investment cap is making independently. Uh, it's it's really shows that they have great vision to develop the women's game. Uh, it's still sponsored by CAF, and no sponsor at the moment. And this uh, is to show that, yes, we definitely have to build that environment. We definitely have to build uh, that uh, women's football culture. And that definitely will go a long way. The investment will go a long way in encouraging more private sector uh, to embrace the women's game, at least ensure that, yes, uh, more club emerges. Now you see uh, this club championship has now encouraged more teams. Uh, you see, like we see in Europe, uh, Leon definitely they know they can't challenge very well in Europe, but on the women's side, they've dominated. And I think this is what many clubs and with women, it's something that is quite easy to achieve when you could make the right investments and also uh, can, can really make great commitments to ensuring that, yes, 
uh, your club go as far as possible in terms of uh, the structure, in terms of uh, quality study, and also in terms of uh, quality motivation for your players. So we were seeing a lot of teams emerging, even from Nigeria, Remot, Star, Remot Stars ladies. So, so many teams across the continent already emerging, many men's club already embracing uh, women's, uh, women, uh, creating already, launching women's side of their, of their club side. So uh, this, this will really go a long way in encouraging more, uh, more engagement of girl child in women's football and at the same time it's the impact is already rich we saw so many talents at the last nations cup these were products of uh, uh the, the 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 champions League, a lot of them so i think one cannot be excited enough uh to realize what opportunity this tournament has brought uh to to to, to everyone in africa so i think the, the, okay. the best days of the women's in africa is yet to come and we can't wait to see more of that all right, uh, well said, Sam Amadou. But quick one, before I let you go, uh, on paper, it's obvious it's between Asfa and Mamelodi Saunders. Do you think we'll see an upset in this tournament? Yeah, definitely. We, 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 I believe there can be. I believe that is a possibility. And uh, uh, surely we have a lot of teams in the competition. Sports in Casablanca, definitely, probably, uh, they may not be as good as uh, Asfa of Morocco. But uh, when you look at them, they... they, they sprung surprise, especially at the North African uh, qualifiers. And you can't ignore the likes of Hurricane uh, from Malabo, that's uh, from Equatorial Guinea, and also Ampem Dakwa of, of, of Ghana. This is a solid side. The land from the, the downfall they had last year, not qualifying at the expense of Nigeria's Barca Queens. And they also we want to go all the way, uh, to go as far as surpassing uh, uh, Hasaka ladies of, of, of Ghana, who, who went all through all the way to the finals uh, in the in the in the last tournament. So I think uh, every region is keen to to uh, to host and win. And I think it is the time of the West African region. Okay. I think Club Atletico, uh, who are the host right. team, will also will also be anxious to host and win this tournament because definitely playing uh, on their home ground would definitely be a factor. Now we saw what they did at the Wafu okay. tournament finishing third. Surely they want to really go uh, all the way and ensure that, yes, they pull off surprise in the finals, especially fighting up against the uh, Sundowns and as far of Morocco. All right, a big one. Uh, we'll wait to see what happens when the tournament goes down on Sunday. Uh, very much thanks to you, Samuel Amadou, uh, for your time. I mean, uh, it's been a very interesting conversation with you. Thank you very much. Yeah, thanks for having me. Always a pleasure.